here in this space. This space is pretty incredible um, and uh, means a lot to me personally. I did the Sundance Labs year, years ago and uh, it's always a good day when we're at Skywalker, so thank you all for coming. Um, this film is also very personal to me. Uh, ben Prophet, my co-director, wish he could be here tonight, but he first told me about this repair shop, and he, he and I were working on another film called The Concertos of Conversation years ago, and uh, he found out about the repair shop from one of our producers, Jeremy Lambert, and he asked me if I had heard of it because he knew I was from LA and I went to LAUSD schools. And I not only hadn't heard of this repair shop, but I also was surprised that I never thought about how the instruments that I played all my life were kept in great condition. And the music rooms, uh, the pianos that I played from elementary school all the way through high school were my safe space in, in those schools. And so I really relied on those to kind of make it through the everyday of those places. And when I found out about this repair shop and the technicians that work tirelessly to make sure that those instruments are in good repair, it immediately became a way for me to not only meet those people and say thank you to them and, and make this film to honor them. And we actually have those, those technicians here tonight. So, um, <laughs> hey. um, but yeah, hope you all enjoy the movie. We'll be back to uh, uh, talk a little bit afterward, but um, let's get it going. Thank you all so much. <laughs> so, you know, I watched this earlier today. First of all, it, this is available on YouTube. I think legally, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't want to promote an illegal link. <laughs> uh, which I, which is so great because I immediately was like, oh, I got to show my kids this. Oh, that's beautiful. You know what I mean? I have my oldest daughter's twelve. She plays guitar and piano, and just to sort of see other kids in a in their own journey, I think is really powerful. But this seems to me, and it's sort of mentioned at the end, but it is such an argument for arts in the school. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, first, I, I just want to have Patty, Steve, Dan, and Dwayne. Can you guys stand up? Can you stand up? Can you stand up? for a superhero movie, and this is the new Avengers, so I feel like this. Especially at the end where I think Steve says, not in my city. And they're like, are you Batman? Like, <laughs> like, not on my watch, Gotham. Okay. Uh, 100%. Um, yeah, so it definitely feels like, um, you know, just in terms of what music education can do beyond just creating credible musicians, I think the thing that this film really speaks to is the other aspects of just being a good human or... Um, a good citizen uh, can come from music education, you know, thinking about all of the students at such young ages really eloquently talking about how music can help them uh, gain confidence in the face of, you know, uh, anxiety or fear and, and sadness or, you know, create discipline. Um, I think that for me, uh, obviously I had um, a connection with the instrument and it led me to be a musician, but the reason why I had that connection with it is because that was the best way for me to process emotion. Like I couldn't really, I didn't feel like I had a place to talk about moments where I felt sad or angry or any of that kind of stuff. And the piano became a place to do that. And I feel like there's so many people we've spoken to in the release of this film that have found themselves in other professions that talk about how music education led them there and how you know playing in an orchestra made them a a good community member or how playing in a jazz band taught them how to listen and so on and so forth. And that's something that should not be available to you only if you have money. Exactly. And like, and just that um, I was talking to my friend who was my roommate in college and he was saying that his mom couldn't afford therapy and bought him a guitar because it was like a, a, you know, Fourth of July sale and she thought that might be a place for him to do that. But he was like, I took such good care of it because if it broke, then we couldn't afford anything else, you know? And so the idea of, of there being access to people that maybe can't afford to not only pay for the instrument, but also the upkeep of it, it definitely should be something that everyone should have access to for free. And I think seeing the, the way you uh, and your co-director put it together is so brilliant because everybody comes to their instrument differently, but everybody is sort of looking for something to help them with some sort of like, whether it's trauma or finding a place of solace or that they're every, and some become professional musicians and open for Elvis and some just like, it's a way to sort of like access mental health, you know? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, one just with that in terms of the structure of it. I also want to shout out Nick Wright, our editor, who's also here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. yeah. I was like an editor with two directors. <laughs> shout out to your editor. Yeah. <laughs> but he just told me. <laughs> um, but you know, I think the thing that was so amazing about uh, the process of making is when Ben first went down to the shop and you know gave this uh, speech to see who might want to volunteer to be a part of this process four people said yes and those are the four people in the film and that there was never any sort of pre-interview process to see like whose story is more interesting or let's make sure we have the best stories that all go together you know these four individuals were the ones that were brave and honest and vulnerable enough to step forward and share their their stories and their truths and it's it's not only a testament to the fact that everybody has an incredible story and could have a documentary that it's made about them that feels moving but at the same time um, we feel so lucky that it came together in that way where it is able to really demonstrate a bunch of different people coming from different paths that found a way to have music help them in moments where they felt broken yeah i certainly agree that everybody does have a story but there is a moment as someone who's directed a couple documentaries where you hear somebody tell a story and you go but not everybody has that story yeah, yeah. and it seems to be like the four people who stepped up you were, you discovered gold you know? yeah yeah like these are not these are because they all represent a different type of story they all have a different way that they got to their instrument if you found four people who we all happen to open for elvis that's not the same documentary yeah. but when you find one guy <laughs> you know or you find you know these stories of immigrants and these stories of different types of immigrants and different ways people immigrate to the country and I would imagine that there is a sense of like that also becomes a problem of like you could just focus on one story because they're so good. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we have moments of trying to experiment with like, should this be four separate short documentaries? Should this be a feature length film? Um, and really trying to, you know, again, put Nick under the, the gun and trying to figure out how to fit this all into a short film. Yeah, yeah. And the directors walk out of the room and say, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> See you on Monday. <laughs> Uh, so how, and, I, and it, I'm sure you've told the story before, but how does this shop become, like, where does the, where's the spark of the idea? Like, is the, is the shop the spark of the idea? Is the story about music education in schools? What, what is the spark of the idea? So it was the shop. So Jeremy Lambert sent an article to Ben, um, and Ben immediately was just fascinated by, in his mind, it was like, this is the North Pole of, of musical instruments. So like, I need to go see what this looks like. Um, but that was kind of the, the end, right? It was just like, he had a feeling that it'd be fascinating to see, you know, 80,000 instruments, now it's over 100,000 instruments that are going to this one place. And it's only 12 people that work on these instruments. Like, how does that work? And, you know, just imagine this warehouse filled with, with parts of instruments and all that kind of stuff. So he felt like it'd be a really interesting uh, visual space. And then on top of that, Ben and Breakwater have done a lot of craft movies and, and he, from that experience, knows that oftentimes when somebody's talking about their craft and you see them doing that, that can be an externalization of what, whatever they're talking about internally. Yeah, 